everybody and welcome back to our tutorials on doggy portraits um, in collaboration with Keith Lee Healthy Living. Um, we've been working on doing a dog portrait and I think a lot of you are doing your own portraits of your own lovely dogs, um, which is great, I can't wait to see them. So we've worked on eyes and the nose and we've done one ear. So this week we're going to be continuing with his other ear and his mouth. And, and then I'm going to start filling in some of his face and doing the fur. So, come on, let's get started. Are you in the right position there, Lulu? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you want to bring your chair a bit closer so you can sort of behind this chair? That might be a bit better. Are you going to be all right? Like that? How's that? Uh -huh. Is that a good view? Yeah. Okay, so again, I'm working on, I've got a, a printout of, of Bo, um, but it's, it, it's just really faint, so I'm working off the actual photograph on Lulu's phone. Um, I'm going to work in a number six brush, and I'm just going to start with Bo's other ear. Um, so this ear, Lulu, if you can just see, this is a lot darker, we can see inside of that ear, whereas this ear is a lot lighter, isn't it? So we're going to try and we're going to use the same colours we used with that air, but obviously it's going to be a lot lighter shade. So what I'm going to do is put the darker colours in first. So I'm just going to start with um, some... I, I, when, when I look at it, I can just see loads of colours. I'm just going to try and put all those colours in to make it as rich as possible. Because you know what watercolours are like. They can be look so faint and wishy-washy. Um, so I'm going to start with a burnt umber for this... Can you see that, Lou? For this outside of the ear. Yeah. Okay. So, and I'm just, you know, using my brush, just like it's uh, fur, just trying to go create that texture of fur. So just maintaining the shape of his ear. He's having a little sleep at the moment. He's been on quite a big walk this morning. Mm -hmm. He was trying to head up to the reservoir, wasn't he, this morning, Lou? Yeah. But we didn't have time for that, so. So I'm just going around the edge. I can see there's just this darker area around the edge of Bo's ear. I'm just going to go across there because I can see you know, how underneath the, those lighter bits, it is darker. So I'm just trying to put that on, trying to create that. Okay, and then I just want to go even darker with that. So I'm going to go in with um, an indigo. I do like blue, a dark blue, just to darken things off. But Payne's Grey is just as lovely. But with Bo, I'm just gonna try and do a little bit more the indigo and the paint's grey. It can just be a little bit softer. And especially if some of you, I know some of you are doing very shiny coated dogs. Um, and if you are, then um, indigo is just lovely for that, to get that shine. But then I can see just on this outer edge again, We've got we're darker. I think he knows we're talking about him. Just adding a little bit of that, so we can see the brown through it, but we can also see that little bit of indigo. And I've got much darker here and here. So I'm just going to add a little bit more tone. I can just see that as that that ear that ear is bending around. We are a little bit darker. So as we all know, it dries so much lighter. So try and add that colour. Now that's the placement. Thank you, Bo. Okay. So now I'm going to get some of these other colours in. So I can see a lovely burnt sienna in Bo's ear here. So let's just get that in. From about there. Hello, mm -hmm. Bo. Hello, Bo. Hello, did you tell us that the postman had arrived? <laughs> Thank you. Right, and then a little bit 
you'll be able to follow this because you've all got a picture of Bo, exactly what I'm doing. Then a little bit of burnt sienna, um, burnt umber I can see in there. Okay, just over the top of that. And then, I'm just actually going to go to put a little bit of raw umber in. I can just see that lighter colour just feeding through. But I'm going to go with a really, you know, for his um, lovely bits of fur, his long bits of blonde fur, I'm going to go with the yellow one for that. Okay, so all these lovely wispy bits, let's put those in. And like I always say to you, yellow ochre is a really strong pigment. So you really don't need to put that much on. And if you put too much on, just lift it out. So just striking that across. And as those colours bleed together, we'll get some lovely, a lovely feeling of the fur. all dried a little bit quicker than I would have liked actually. So I'm just going to bring some of that yellow ochre now across. Just some little wisps. Blond. That Bo has. I'm just going to darken up a little bit. So I'm just going to get a little bit of blue. And I just want that to connect, I didn't it? it? It had dried, so I didn't draw much of that colour across, and I just want it to feel a little bit more fur like, so I want the bleeding to happen. So I'm just adding that to the yellow ochre there. Obviously, you've got to be careful because you don't want to get start getting um, green, but you will get. That. I don't want to have too much white, well, a little bit of white is fine. So something like that, and I'll probably go back and just lift a bit of that out. I wish I had a, didn't bring a tissue in again, Lynn. So I'm just going to lift a little bit. So just a dry brush. Just going to lift a bit of that out. Can you see that's has such a lovely effect? And if I do it while it's wet, I could do it when it was dry, but while, if I do it while it's wet, it'll just come out a lot clearer. So something like that, and I can go back and just fiddle around with that if I want to, which I do, I just want to just make sure I don't have a hard edge there and there, all these tweaky things you'll just get a feel for. I was watching Grace and Perry the other night and he was saying, recommending um, that you always start with the easy things first and then move on to the hard things so you get into the flow of it. And I'm the opposite. I always start with eyes and ears and that gets me into the flow because I think I, because I find doing very tight, detailed work very easy. And when I'm a lot freer, that's when I, I find I have to get into a flow to get to work myself up to that. Um, so it's interesting, isn't it? And I think he probably is talking about artists that are working in oils and um, acrylics maybe. I think it's I think it is different watercolours, I really do. Right, so that's his little ears done they look lovely, lots of beautiful colours going on there. So um I'm gonna just work down this side of his face just because I feel like it's right to do that. I, I work very instinctively, so um I'm just gonna go down there. So I, I can see underneath he's a sable shelter, I can see underneath. He's got a lot of blonde underneath and then this black over the top. Um, so I'm going to put my little bit of yellow ochre underneath. My wisps coming out. Don't go away though. <laughs> just so I've got that layering underneath, which I'm, I'm going to get rid of a lot of it, but I just want it to be there. Okay. Oh, he's really coming to life, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go in with some 
and burnt umber. Just to continue where we put that little bit of burnt umber going up into his ear. I'm just going to continue that down. And that, yeah, so with Bo, because he's got such long hair, I'm just doing all these individual strokes. I'm trying not to use the paint too heavily. And I'm not um, just trying to be really, really light with it. So we've got that brown bit that comes around. And up here. So I'm using a lot less pigment now as I'm coming up. This little bit of his head there. I just want that to connect in there. So now I'm going to go in with some um, indigo. So this really is part of Bo. It's very, it's quite blue to me. So that that's what I'm going to go with. Just, but just the lightest bit. Like I can see already, that's way too much pigment. I'm just going to try and keep it really light. And I'm just keeping up with this rhythm. Putting that blue because he's got a sort of a sweetheart shape. And that indigo is also um, telling me about the shine on his head. And it's um, showing me that there's light hitting the top of his head. Because instinctively we all know that it's going to go darker as we get further down his face. And what's that, Lulu? The rock that was used to build this dam. How should we get that off, darling? Um, you're gonna. <laughs> uh, I think you're just gonna. You're gonna have to go into something else which has okay. another sound on. <laughs> oh, it's um, right. Professor, what's his name? So if you just go into Instagram, I mean, or Snapchat. Yeah. And then just, yeah, go into that. No. <laughs> 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 right, when we go into Snapchat. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to turn the volume down. Right, okay. That's the most sensible shot of the volume. No, because you're pressing the... <laughs> Oh. Professor, what's his name? I don't know. Where's, where's the doggy gone now, darling? Oh, uh, go on to WhatsApp again. WhatsApp? Yeah. Okay. Is it one that you've sent to me, sweetheart? Yeah. If you go up, up, up. Oh, there. I can see. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to get the side of his face to and I can just I'm just gonna go in with the blue. Just here. With my indigo. You know, and just pop some on, leave it, and then we can come back to it. We don't have to get it all done. All at the same time. So I'm just going to get some yellow oak there now, just for these wisps that are happening here. Really don't want to go too heavy with this paint. Just trying to keep it as light as possible. And then just moving across, so I can see much more of a raw umber there. I am trying to keep my palette down to minimum. Um, but you know, if you're using sort of loads of browns and yellows, of course it's fine. You know, you're not gonna, it's not gonna be displeasing. I'm just gonna identify this little uh, crease he's got in the middle of his head. And I'm doing this in raw umber now. He's got so much blonde in there as well. And you see, I'm going over that little bit of sheen that I put in. Okay. 
don't want to put too much on so just try and do as little as possible and build it up okay so i can see loads of burnt sienna in the middle of those forehead so that's what i'm going to put in now there we are and on this side as well coming up so you can see a lot of that um blue that indigo is being covered a lot more of that crease And then some more of my brown. So I've got some burnt umber now. And just it's just such a soft amount of colour though. It's a really really light value. So just because there's so much light hitting the top of his head there, we do have that crease and it just appears behind there. I'm just going to soften that off a bit because it is very light. So I've put my lines in to say, look, this is the hair. But I'm just softening it off a bit. So it's got a really light tone there. Okay. I'll probably go over a lot of this and soften it off because I don't personally like all these individual um, hairs showing like they are. So just with a slightly moist brush, just going across this. And just softening some of this off, okay. And just be careful which way you go with it, obviously. Oh, thank you, Lee. I'll just okay. Yeah, we're starting to come to life. Okay, I think what we'll do is just move across. The other side of his forehead now. So again, I can see all that blue, and I'm going to go with that first. Just the lightest wash of indigo for this side above his eye. Because sometimes when you're painting, especially when you've got to paint, you know, on white paper like this with with watercolors, if you're painting, if you've got some lighter areas. You know, I always tend to try and see all the other colours. You know, you can't paint white with watercolours, so just trying to, to identify as many colours as possible really helps. And once you go with that colour for that to identify, right, well, blue is my white, then you have to just keep that going throughout and it will make sense. Um, I'm going to go with the raw rumba. So like I say, when I'm painting, it's very instinctive as well, how the colours I choose. There's so much more umber down there in Bo's nose. A little bit of burnt sienna as well. Um, letting that blue down into the raw umber because that's the thing with this we do want a lot of this colours to start bleeding now I, personally I don't want it to be too intricate but you may want that you may want it to be really intricate fine art detail I'm starting to get that crease so I'm going to just try and Create more of that crease in the centre of Bo's head while the paint's wet. I don't want to leave it to dry and come back later and do it because it just won't look as good. So I'm just putting a little bit of burnt umber in there. Okay. And I want all these colours to look like they're coming. It's not the crease, that it's that, you know, the hair's got thicker in there. So try and make that flow out. How are we doing for the time, Lou? Um, we're basically on 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Right, 
just going to start working up front. I'm going to go put some yellow ochre in here. Just getting rid of that hard line that's been created there. And then at the base of Bo's um, ear, it's dark. So I'm going to go trying to put some tone in now. So I'm going with my burnt umber, and I know that at the base of that ear it's dark because the shading there isn't there. And then around here, so he's got this gorgeous flick of his eye, and then here it's really dark. And that comes up and feeds up to that ear, okay? And then I'm just softening that off into the blue that I did. Okay, I'm just going to get a bit more blue now. So that I'm putting more blue in this shadowing that I've created with the brown. I'm just flicking that around so that the blue is ending up in the brown so it's going even darker. There we are. Oh, I suppose that looks in here. Yeah, I'll that back in. There we are. Okay, and I'm just, I've got, I've been left with a hard line, so moist brush, and I'm just going to lift that because I just don't want to be left with that and have to deal with that later. So we're starting to get that crease, okay. Oh, I've turned the phone off. I oh, didn't need to do that, Lou. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, darling. Thank you, sweetheart. Right, okay, let's have a look at this side. So I'm just gonna we're gonna carry on with this side of the um, of his fur over here. And again, actually gonna go with a bit of yellow underneath this. So just coming out, it's ever so dark where it creases in. And we've got this more yellowy bit. So the yellow we've cut, brilliant colour, which is such a lovely natural tone. And then all this crazy fur. If you really need to do it to the greenness, it's got a little bit out of hand. And then we'll some more of my blue. You know, later on I might come back and just put some paints grey in there, but I'm quite happy with the blue at the moment. I like I like the blue on him. And blue, like I always say to you, blue and black, fabulous colour combo. Can't go wrong. There we are with our indigo. I'm just going to put some more depth of colour in there, some more depth of colour in here. And don't be afraid because maybe you can just see grey, but it would be fine to do this all with paints grey. But I do like to use, you know, more unusual colours. Um, so whatever you, you know, use, just go with that theme throughout. Don't, don't try and swap and change really. So I'm just going to get a little bit of my raw umber now, which is a little bit softer than the yellow I've used. And that combined with the blue will be good. Okay. 
So I can just see at this side, I just really want to darken up that area. So I'm going to darken that up with a little bit of brown. Just want that under here. But like I say, I may go back with some paint grey later. We will tweak and tweak this. Okay, I'm just going to let that rest. So I'm going to let all that rest, see how I feel about it, come back to it on the next tutorial. But before we go, I'm just going to get his little mouth done. Have we got time, Lee? What's happening? Uh, we're on 25 minutes. Okay, cool. So his little black mouth, so I'm going to go paint grey. And uh, he hasn't got any shine. His little teeth aren't showing, sadly. He does sometimes get his little teeth out, doesn't he, Lou? Yeah. He has them. So he's got a little bit of a shine, which I'm going to make a little bit more of on, the, on his upper lip. And you'll be able to see on the photo that I post, that little bit of a shine. So all I'm doing with the shine is just leaving the paper white. And I can close it up later if it's too much, it doesn't make any sense. But that looks okay to me. Just the faintest bit there, and then he's got his little grin again, just a lovely little bit of expression there. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> do you want to make the most of that? He looks very happy with himself, doesn't he? Yeah, so some of you, I think, we're painting doggies with their mouths open. I'm just going to bring some of that paint spray out. That shadowing. Okay. And a little bit more, just going to get that a bit stronger in there inside. Because it's just better to put it on now, let it bleed, and it'll be all soft than coming back to it. So you know how much lighter once colours dry. Do a little bit while I've done that, just that little bit under his chin, I think. Oh, don't go away, bro. I'm just going to pop a little bit of yellow ochre. Just to get that shaping ready for next week. I really want that mouth to feel like it's sitting in. And then we're going to go with some burnt sienna. Putting it on, so I'm being a lot freer now with my paint. I'm going to start getting a lot freer with it as I move down bow. And that just needs to be a lot darker there. Just allowing that to bleed into that paint's grey a bit. Okay, and I'm like, I am going to just put a little bit of blue in there, a little bit of indigo. Just in there, just to darken, because it really is very, very dark in there. So I'm just letting that bleed. And if we work in sections like this, it does really help, actually, you know, to separate the bits of the body, otherwise it'll just end up like one big blob. So we're just putting that in. Around his mouth there. Okay. Right, so we'll leave it there. So we'll, we'll come back next week and do a little bit more of him. But thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you again. Bye.